into the word today I want you to turn with me to Romans chapter number 11 praise team you could be seated thank you so much Jess if you can hang with me for a minute here Romans chapter number 11 if you have your word today it's here also on the screen again remain standing with us if you're able to do so for the reading of God's holy word how many is thankful for God's word today amen his word is life isn't it we need his word Thank you, Father. Romans chapter number 11, verses 1 through 5. This is Apostle Paul. He's writing to the church of Rome, the believers there. And he's about to connect them and share with them a story of Elijah that is found in 1 Kings chapter number 19. And he's trying to prove a point to them. And this is what he says. He says, I ask then, has God rejected his people? By no means. How many is thankful for that today? Has God rejected his people? By no means. For I myself am an Israelite. This is Paul speaking. I'm a descendant of Abraham, a member of the tribe of Benjamin. God has not rejected his people whom he foreknew. Do you not know what the scripture says of Elijah? So here he is connecting them to the story in 1 Kings 19. How he appeals to God against Israel. And this is what Elijah cried out to God in that time. He said, Lord, they have all killed your prophets. They have demolished your altars. And I alone am left. Have you ever been there where you feel like you're the only one? <laughs> you ever been there? He said, and I alone am left. And they seek my life. But what is God's reply to him? This is what the Lord said. I have kept for myself, Elijah, 7,000 men who have not bowed the knee to that false idol, false god bell. And I love this part right here. So too, at the present time, there is a remnant chosen by God. Amen. He said there's still a people that haven't bowed down to this false god and the, the culture of the day and at this present time there is still a remnant that is still standing you are not alone today i want to preach to you a brand new series called the remnant let's pray father we thank you for your word today we thank you for your presence we thank you for what you're doing in this atmosphere we are hungry for you we desire you give us an ear to hear what the spirit of the lord has to say you're raising up a remnant army in this hour in this day a people within a people god sold out to you we want to be a part of the remnant in jesus mighty name as you're seated today look at three people and tell them say i am a part of the remnant One more time today, everybody shout remnant. I want to tell you this morning that God always looks for. God has always seemed to seek, to call. He seems to have chosen and chooses at least one that will stand in the gap in the hour of crisis and chaos. There's always a group, it seems to, to be throughout Scripture in the history of the church. There always seems to be a group or a team, a few, or at least a somebody, at least one, because all God really needs is just one that'll stand up for him. Someone that'll cry loud and spare not. Amen? Ezekiel 22, verse number 30, the Bible says, God speaking said, I look for one that would make up the hedge and stand in the gap. 
Psalm 14 and 2 says this, The Lord looks down from heaven on all mankind to see if there are any who understand, if there will be any who will seek God. God is searching. God is looking. God is searching the land, the hour, this generation, this day. He's looking for somebody that would say yes to him. Somebody that he can use in this hour, in this day. Somebody that he can choose. Someone that will stand up. Someone that is willing. Listen, as he looks, God seems to have always found in the time of crisis and chaos throughout Scripture, he's always found a Moses. He's always had a Joshua. He's always had a Gideon, a Daniel, a Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Amen? A David that would run after Goliath, uh, and Esther, and so on and so on throughout Scripture. That in the moment of crisis and chaos and bondage and wickedness in the culture in the day, someone that would stand up and someone that would run to the call. A remnant army, a remnant person. Look at your neighbor today and say, I am remnant. He's always had, throughout scripture, he's always had an army. He's always had mighty men. He's always had mighty women. There's always been a group of folks, amen? There's always been 70 and 12 and 3 and one, you know, in the Old Testament, there's the crowd, there's the, the 70 elders, there's the 12 tribes of, of Judah, uh, then there's Joshua, Aaron, and Hur, and then there is Moses that represents the one. In the New Testament, we see that type and shadow fulfilled. There's the crowd, there's the 70 that he sent out two by two, there's the 12 disciples, there's Peter, James, and John the three, and then John the beloved. He's always had a 70, always had a 12 always had a three always had a one he's always had somebody all he needs is at least one that will stand up in the moment of hour in the moment of time in the moment of need there's always someone that will yield there's always somebody that he can place his power and his anointing and his calling upon that will run after the cause and watch this if he can't find one you just go ahead and ask Balaam the prophet who wouldn't obey God will even use a donkey if he has to to get his purpose God is going to get his purpose across in this hour in this land in this day amen so he might as well use somebody willing. Everybody say, I am willing. So in Scripture, in the Old and throughout the New Testament, again, there's always somebody that's been called in the midst of crisis. There's always been someone that will stand up in the middle of spiritual chaos. Every time the devil builds a Goliath, God always has a David Every time that there's a yoke of bondage, God always has an anointing that can destroy that yoke of bondage. In the middle of bondage, there's always a Moses. In the middle of claiming the promised land, there's always a Joshua. In the moment when people say, stop praying, and if you do, there is a lion's den, there is still a Daniel that will continue to lift his voice and pray. Even in the middle of, if you don't bow down and worship this idol, we will heat the fiery furnace seven times hotter and throw you in. But there is always a Shadrach and a Meshach and a Bendigo somewhere that will not bow down. In the middle of genocide, there is yet in Esther somewhere in the middle of a broken down city there is a Nehemiah that will build it in the midst of people and the lost Gentiles there will be a Paul that will run after it throughout scripture there's always been someone that's radical somebody that's sold out somebody that's counted the cost someone that will carry the burden someone that has a purpose on their life that will stand in the moment of chaos stand in the
in the moment of spiritual crisis, someone that will reach out in the moment of struggle. There's always a pillar. There's always a rock of people that will stand in the middle of the storm and cry out for righteousness in the middle of wickedness. God has always had a remnant people. A people that won't bow, a people that won't quit, a people that won't hush, a people that will rise up in the face of adversity and will advance the kingdom of God no matter what the devil says, no matter what the government says, no matter what the people on Facebook say, somebody that will rise up in the middle of the face of adversity. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise today. Look at your neighbor in the elbow and say, he's talking about me today. Romans chapter number 11. Paul's reminding the people of the time of Elijah and 1 Kings 19. A time when Elijah felt all alone. A time when he felt that the people had forsaken God. And that he was the only one. He said, Lord, I am the only one that is serving you in the middle of all these people. Have you ever been there? Maybe I'm the only one. <laughs> I've been there before. I've been there. Lord, I, I'm the only one that seems like that, that loves you. I'm the only one that loves you, God. I'm the only one going to church, but yet all these folks are in church loving God too. Maybe have you ever felt sorry for yourself a little bit? He said, I feel like I'm the only one, God. All the people have forsaken you. I'm the only one. I don't know if I can make it. But God said, listen, there's still 7,000 in this region that haven't bowed their knee to this false god, Baal. You're not the only one. God is telling Elijah, I know it looks bad. And I know it looks dark. And I know it looks like there's defeat all around you. And I know there's a lot of spiritual chaos and spiritual crisis and a lot of unrighteousness and a lot of uh, uh, wickedness and, and it appears to your eye that you are all by yourself. But he says, no, Elijah, I have a remnant. I have a folk that have not bowed. I have people that have not caved. I have people that will not stop. I have people that are still standing and still prophesying and still crying loud and sparing not still praying and still standing for righteousness listen in this hour we are in the middle of chaos we are in the middle of spiritual crisis it appears that there are many that are lukewarm many that have forsaken the truth many are backslidden we are in a state across America of apostasy a great falling away many have become like Demas in the New Testament when Paul said he has forsaken God he has forsaken the ministry because he loves this present world there's a lot of confusion a lot of division a lot of racism a lot of church division a lot of sin and a lot of wickedness it appears discouraging and depressing it appears that the enemy may have an upper hand but I come to tell you today God still has a remnant God still has a people standing a people praying a people fasting a people preaching a people crying loud and sparing not is there anybody that's a part of the remnant of God today give the Lord a hand clap of praise this morning these folk that stand in the middle of spiritual crisis these folk these individuals are known as the remnant again look at your neighbor and say I am part of the remnant A remnant group of people. The word remnant, everybody follow me here today. The word remnant means a small quantity of the whole. A small quantity of the whole. A remnant means a portion or a piece of the entirety. A portion, a piece, a small quantity, a a residue. Remnant means a remaining substance. And I shared this the other night when I was in Kansas City that a remaining substance of 
that which has gone through the fire. Because God is a consuming fire. He is a refiner's fire. And you and I are going to have seasons in our walk with him, in our ministries, where we're going to have to walk through the fire. Because in the fire, he burns up the chaff and he purifies that which is of him. And a remnant is a remaining substance of that that has went through the fire. And not everybody is going to make it through the fire. Only a remaining substance of the remnant, that purity of their heart and right motivation. Amen? Remnant means a circle within a circle, a people within a people, a chosen people out of a crowd, a tribe within a tribe, a group within a group. A remnant means this. A remnant are people that are surrendered, people that are sold out, people that are radical for the cause of Christ. They've counted the cost. They have an absolute yes in their heart for the will of God. They're hungry. They're faithful. They are steadfast. They are selfless, sacrificial, and they are serving. The mandate of the kingdom. The remnant are people that see the call and feel the mandate of the king. They have a vision. They have the mandate of the kingdom. The great commission. They see his purpose. They, they know that there's a cause of Christ for this day. They understand the crisis and the chaos and the spiritual crisis and wickedness. But they will rise up and stand up to make a difference. To see God's righteousness be proclaimed. And see people pulled out of the line of going to hell and be brought into the fold in the body of Christ. God has always had a remnant. I come to tell you today... That in this hour, in this moment in time and history, that God is seeking and God is raising up a remnant. Amen. God is raising up a people that are that that care less about self and all they care about is the Savior. Come on, somebody. A people that are crying loud. A, a people that are standing for righteousness. A, a people that are proclaiming the word of God and desire to fulfill the mandate of the king on their life. Is there anybody ready to be a part of the remnant? Is there anybody that's ready to stand for truth like never before and preach righteousness and go into spiritual warfare and charge the gates of hell? Is there anybody that's tired of sitting back and sitting down and sitting by and ready to stand up and do what God has called you to do. A remnant people. Not everyone, watch this quote here, not everyone will be a part of the remnant, but everyone is invited to be a part of it. Did you hear that? Every person is invited to be a part of the remnant. Every believer, I should say, every child of God, every son and daughter is invited to be a part of the remnant of God, but that doesn't mean that every person will be a part of the remnant. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 22, verse number 14, these are Jesus' words. He said, for many are what? But few are chosen. Many are called, but few are chosen. Many are called. Many have a purpose on their life. Many have been separated by God for such a time as this. Many, he has spoke their name. Many he has called. Many have had his hands laid upon their heart. Even before they were formed in the belly of their mother, God separated them. Many have a plan and a purpose of God on their life. Many are called, but only a few will be chosen. Only a few will actually say yes. Only a few will run after him. Because here's the example of the scripture, Jesus calls, and then those that yield and say yes are the ones he chooses. I heard this example given one time. It's like a man that's about to, to move from one house to another. How many like moving? Nobody. <laughs> well, one person did. <laughs> he didn't like his old house. Praise the Lord. <laughs> 
and he calls up his friends. He, you know, he, he's hanging out with his friends. This is an example I heard. I thought it was so good. He said, I'm moving next Saturday. If you guys help me, I'll throw some pizza in there. I mean, that's usually the deal. I'll buy some pizza. And he's like, I, I need some help moving. And then out of four friends, you know, some start looking around. And then one says, I can help. And then he says, okay, I choose you. <laughs> the other guys are quiet. But he calls out for help. And one says, I'll help. And he says, you're chosen. Do you see it? Many are called. But few are chosen. Because it's not the many that say, yes, Lord, you can use me. It's not the many that say, yes, I'll be what you want me to be. Do what you want me to do. Go where you want me to go. But those who do, he says, I choose you. See, every person is inv invited to be a part of the remnant, but not everybody will be. Why? Because there is a price to pay. There is a cross to bear. There is a cost that has to be made. There is a life that has to be surrendered. A will that is forfeited over to God. There has to be a prayer, not my will, but your will be done. If you're going to be chosen, and you're going to be a part of the remnant that stands up in the last hour and the last day, to do exploits for their God. That through your hands and through your voice and through your ministry and through your heart, there will be signs and wonders and miracles. you got to understand that he's calling and you've got to say yes. And there's going to be a price to be paid and a life that has to be surrendered. But I want to tell you, if you do, the rewards are out of this world. May the Lord come by and call his people again. May the Lord come by and speak to the depths of our heart and our soul. I'm preaching to somebody today. You remember the time. This is not in my notes. You remember the time that God came by your way. How many remember that moment? When God came by and spoke to your heart. When God came by and put his hands upon you. When God came by and ministered and God began to draw you to his purpose and his plan. I remember being a child giving my heart to Jesus. I remember being 13 years old and the Lord coming by and speaking to the depths of my heart and calling me to preach his word. I've told my story many times. I remember at that time at 15, I finally surrendered to it. He forever changed my life. I remember in my dorm room in Bible college in my first semester one night about 2 o'clock in the morning, Willie, the Lord began to show me Jeremiah chapter number 1. And he said, I knew you before. I formed you in the belly of your mother and he said I, I called you I separated you and then he said I called you to plant and I called you to build and I called you to pull down and I called you to do all these things it's all in Jeremiah chapter number one God spoke that to me I got such a revelation of my life in Jeremiah chapter one in the dorm room of my Bible college I went home for a weekend a few weeks later we had a guest minister in my home church he called me up he began to prophesy over me and this is what he said. I have called you for such a time as this to root and to plant and to build up. Listen, I remember those times he called me and I'm so thankful that I said yes and I'm running after the Lord. Is there anybody that wants to be a part of the remnant of God in the last hour and the last day? Everybody say remnant people. Number one, remnant people, they live separated lives. They live separated lives, amen? I already shared this with you, but Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 4, before I formed you in the belly of your mother, I already knew you and I separated you. 
I separated you out for myself is what God's saying. I knew you before you were even formed in the belly of your mother's womb. I already knew you and I already separated you for my work and my use. Remnant people live separated lives. Paul said to come out from amongst the world and be ye what? Separate. Be ye separate and touch not the unclean thing. If you're going to be part of the remnant that God uses in the last hour, come on somebody. You've got to live a separated life from this world and the culture and the norm. There's going to be some times when God says, you can't go there. There's going to be some times when God says, you can't watch that. There's going to be some times when God said, you can't hang out with them anymore. There's going to be some times when God said, you can't date that anymore. I just set somebody free. That was your answer. You've been praying. There's your answer. You already know. You already know God said no, but you run around to all these people trying to find one that will agree with you so you can stay in it when you know God said don't. They, God said no, God said no, God said no, and one person that's not in tune with the Lord, sure, why not? Well, got my word because it appeases my flesh. People ain't prophesying to you. They're prophesying to you. <laughs> Remnant people live separated lives. God said to Moses, he said, I want you to separate Aaron's sons. Separate Aaron and his sons from all the rest of the crowd and out of the tribe. And they are going to minister to me as priest in the Old Testament. He said, separate Aaron's sons to be priests unto me that will minister to me in the tabernacle. And then he says, in Exodus 29, 20, he commands Moses to do this. I believe I have the scripture here, Exodus 29, 20. He's talking about a sacrifice, slaughter it. And then he said, take some of the blood from the sacrifice and put it on the lobes of the right ears of Aaron and his sons. And on the thumbs of the right hands and upon the big toes of the right feet. God says, separate the sons of Aaron to be my priests that will minister unto me. You got to understand that the priests, they live a separated life. Every other tribe and all the crowd, they got to go and do and, and, and run around uh, around the tabernacle and do basically what they please to do. But the priests had to live a separated life. They couldn't do what everybody else was doing. Even if God said it was okay for all of them to do it, they couldn't do it. There was a call on their life. There was a separation. You can't do what everyone else is doing. Go where everyone else, where they're going. You can't be like and talk like and, 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 and be involved with everybody else. I've called you to a separate call, a holy call. And he said, take the sacrifice and anoint with blood their right earlobe and their right thumb and their right big toe. Anoint it with blood. Because it is a type and shadow, a mark, that the priest had to make sure that they had a blood anointed ear. That they couldn't just listen to just anything. Come on somebody. That their thumb represented what they touched. That they couldn't just be involved and touch anything. And that their foot represented that they couldn't just go just anywhere. Because they had blood anointed ear, blood anointed thumb, and blood anointed big toe. <laughs> God was sanctifying their ear 
and their hands and their feet understanding their hearing and their vocation and their hands their involvement and their path listen it's not always easy to be separated but it is worth it because no one else got to see the Shekinah glory but the priest did in the tabernacle and I want to tell you sometimes it's lonely and sometimes it's tough to be a part of the remnant but when his glory shows up in your life it is worth the separation I tell people you can have your clubbing you can have your sleeping around you can have your drunkenness you can have all that you want you can live it up on this side of eternity but you will lose your soul on the other I will separate today and I will find my life on the other side it's worth the separation number two remnant people see beyond the present this is a little theme today Remnant people see beyond the present world. Galatians 2 and 20 says this. Do I have it on the screen? Maybe not. There we go. Paul said, I am what? I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. But not I now that lives. But Christ, what? Now lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, but it's not me that's living anymore. I'm not living after my own will and desire and flesh and worldliness. Now I'm living after the cause of Christ. Remnant people see beyond this present world. Titus chapter number 2, verses 11 through 13 says, For the grace of God that bring us... Uh, salvation hath appeared unto all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, what are we supposed to do? Deny ungodliness and worldly lust. We should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this what? Present world. Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ. Remnant people live beyond this present world. This world has nothing for us. Now God has allowed us to take part in the pleasures of his blessings and favor, doesn't he? God wants you to have fun in this life. Not to always be like this. Everywhere you go, I'm on a kingdom mandate. Like, bro, you're, you're, you're headed to the porta potty at the park. Chill out a little bit. Chill out. I'm serious about my call, but I don't always take myself seriously. I like to enjoy life and have some fun, amen? But I understand at the same time that this world has nothing for me. This world is pleasures are only for a season. The worldly sinful pleasures, even God admits and says you can have pleasure in sin, but it's only for a short season. And you understand that remnant people know that this world has nothing for them. And so we are living with heaven on our mind, heaven on our hearts, kingdom mandate upon our life and a purpose look at your neighbor and tell him with all seriousness in your heart tell him say there is a kingdom purpose on your life there's a kingdom purpose on your life you're not here by accident you're not here by happenstance God didn't just yeah, I'll go ahead and bring another person into the world. God divinely made you. God divinely fashioned you. God divinely developed you for such a time as this because attached to your DNA, there is a kingdom assignment. Many are called, but who will be the chosen that will say yes to him? Jess, you can come to the music. Number three, remnant people. They burn for God. They burn for God. 
Have you ever been around someone that's passionate about something? And I mean, that's all they talk about. I mean, every step of the way, they, they talk about it. Listen, my son Seth, he's nine years old. Listen, he has a very strong personality. He has a very, like, one-track mind. Listen, he loves Jesus. He really does. He's been filled with the Holy Spirit. God has a great purpose on his life. When he finds out what it is exactly that God has for him, nothing's going to stop him. You know why? Because he has this personality. He will drive you nuts to get what he needs. I say all the time, Seth is going to be an incredible minister of God, and he should be a terrorist, a terrorist, uh, 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 in, a ter- what is it? Yeah, interrogator. Because he is so like, like will not stop. He's like, dad, 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 dad. I mean, we're walking through the living room. I said, no. I said, no. It turns into a song. I said, no. I said, no. I mean, all over the place. Shut the door. He picks the lock. Dad, 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 dad. Like he will make a terror say, all right, I give up. This is what I did. He's got a personality that burns. I mean, he, 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 he loves video games. He, he play, plays a, a couple video games. That's all he talks about. There's times at the dinner table, just talk, 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 over, I mean, over talking everybody. And Jennifer and I look at one another with our eyes real big and go, Phew. like, son, like, the, he, he is trying. He's trying to get me. <laughs> My birthday's coming up. He's trying to get me to buy a Nintendo Switch that's several hundred dollars. He already has one for himself. He wants me to buy one so that we could uh, go back and forth on these games. And he's trying to talk me into it. And he finally, like, he won't stop. And he said, Dad, why don't you want a Nintendo Switch? And I said, because I'm going to be 40. I don't want a Nintendo Switch. I mean, he's trying to talk me into it. He's telling Jen, you need to buy Dad a Nintendo Switch. I mean, he's like, I'm th- if he had Facebook, he would probably create a GoFundMe page. Is there anybody in the room sitting by someone that has that type of personality? <laughs> Just to relate it today spiritually, Seth, he burns for the passion of that moment. Amen. He burns for the passion of that moment. I mean, I can tell you stories. He got into karate. He's watching Karate Kid. He's doing all this stuff. We sign him up for karate. He goes a few weeks and then he's done. Then he's into football. I'm like, this kid's got expensive habits. But he burns with passion for the thing in his heart. And I'm going to tell you that remnant people... Man, they burn for God. You can't help but talk about Him. You can't help but read His Word and talk about His Word. And you can't help but be connected to the things of God and ministry. You can't help but you burn for the things of God. Jeremiah, prophet, I told you about him. God said, before you were formed in the belly of your mother, I already knew you. I separated you. I called you. Jeremiah becomes this great prophet. He's prophesying the things of God. He goes through a hard time. People aren't listening. People's hearts are hard. And he says, I'm done. I'm not prophesying anymore. And he goes and sits down. And then all of a sudden, a few minutes later, he's back up. And he's out there prophesying. And he said, I can't help it. He said, it's like a fire that shut up in my bones. I've got to do it. Listen, remnant people, they burn for God. I want you to stand on your feet today. How many is ready to be a part of the remnant? Remnant doesn't mean that I'm better than anybody else. Remnant means I said yes to his will, to his way. I don't want to stand before the Lord. There are going to be people that are saved. That's going to stand before the Lord. They received salvation. 
but they never did anything for the Lord. They're too busy. I don't want to stand before the Lord one day and have nothing to offer Him. Amen? Never said yes. Never worked for Him. Never served. And with God, it doesn't matter if it's a big thing or a little thing. Because little things are big things in God's eyes. Whether you clean the church, there's people in this auditorium, they clean the church every week. No one knows their name hardly. They come in and they work. God sees. People do a ministry behind closed doors, out in front, behind closed doors. It all matters to God. He sees. He said last would be first. And really, he said, the greatest in the kingdom is him or her that will be servant to all. Serve their brothers and sisters. Love on their brothers and sisters. Help someone, their brother and sister in a time of need. A a prayer, a, a, a card, a word of encouragement, a hug. It's ministry that's vital for the kingdom of God. I want to stand before the Lord and and know that I said yes to Him. I was a part of His remnant. Not everybody will be a part of it. But I made up my mind, I'm not going to sit on the wayside. I'm not going to sit back. I'm going to be engaged. Because the time is coming. The Bible says that night is coming. Jesus' words. Night is coming when no man will be able to work. The day is far spent. The sun, spiritually, Randy, the sun is going down. And darkness is filling the spiritual hour of the day. There's just a little bit of time to work. And yet, there's a great harvest of souls in the balance. Whether there be anyone that will say, I'll help you, God. And he can say, I choose you. Many are called, few are chosen. I'll go where you want me to go. I'll say what you want me to say. I'll witness. I'll pray. I'll go to prayer meeting. I'll go to church. I'll serve in the nursery. I'll clean the church. I'll go out in the streets and witness. I'll bring my brother or sister a a, a, a meal that's in need. I'll reach out to those that are homeless. I'll visit those who are in prison. I'll clothe the naked. I'll take in the orphan. I'll love on the widow. Because God said, if you do these things unto them, you've done them unto me. That's ministry. That's remnant living. I want you to lift your hands to the Lord. And I'm going to ask Jess if she wouldn't mind just to begin to sing. And just fill this atmosphere with worship for a moment.